Hello there geographers and welcome back to another topic review video on the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be reviewing historical causes of diffusion and how that diffusion has shaped the world in which we live. As always, if you find value in these topic review videos, consider subscribing and checking out my other resources in the description of this video. So we know that when diffusion happens, people become exposed to new cultures, ideas, goods and services, religions, and much more. Sometimes when different groups of people come in contact with one another, they will take on certain traits from the other group. This is known as acculturation. We may also see assimilation, which is when the minority group will adopt a new culture, typically the dominant culture in the area, oftentimes resulting in a loss of the minority group's original culture. Both of these concepts we'll talk more about in our Unit 3 Topic 8 video. Today we are focusing on how diffusion occurred in history and how this diffusion shaped the world in which we live. To start, we can look at how diffusion occurred during the colonial era. Colonialism and imperialism led to the spread of different religions, languages, and cultures around the world. As new colonies were created, we saw the mixing of different cultures, which often led to the creation of new cultures. We can see this when looking at the first Spanish settlers in the Caribbean or French settlers in Louisiana. This migration of people from the old world to the new world eventually led to the creation of a new ethnic group, which was made up of different cultural and linguistic backgrounds. These people became known as the Creole people. This process of two cultures coming together to create a new third culture is referred to as Creolization. Going back to the French and Spanish migrants, we saw over the course of generations, they no longer considered themselves to be part of their original culture. Now, originally Creolization was used when talking about linguistics, but over time it's expanded to include other cultural aspects as well. Now, speaking of the colonial era, we could also look at the Spanish conquistadors and the spread of the Catholic faith throughout the New World. Or we could look at empires like the British British Empire, which as it grew and expanded across the globe, they diffused their culture, religion, and language. Today we can see that many of the British Empire's former colonies still speak English. In fact, English today is the largest language in the world and is an example of a lingua franca, which is a common language that people who have a different native language can all understand. We can also look at historical migrations and how they spread new ideas and cultures around the world. Missionaries, for example, led to the diffusion of different religions and cultures as they relocated to different parts of the world to spread the word of God. The Atlantic slave trade forcibly relocated over 12 million enslaved people. This not only changed the cultural landscape of Africa and the New World, but also changed the demographic breakdown of these different regions and led to the diffusion of different religions, cultures, languages, and created a diaspora. A diaspora is the dispersion of any people from their original homeland. In fact, whenever we have migration occur, whether it is forced or voluntary, we can see new ideas, cultures, goods and services, and people mix, which could lead to acculturation or assimilation. Throughout history, we can also see the impact that war had on diffusion. For example, during World War II, we saw the forced migration of thousands and thousands of people who fled for their lives in search of safety. Or we could look at the Cold War, which led to the diffusion of Western and Eastern ideals around the world, as countries had to pick sides between the Soviet Union and the United States. Speaking of the Cold War, we could also look at the impact that military bases around the world have on local populations. For example, the United States has military bases in Central America, the Caribbean, Europe, the Korean Peninsula, and that is just scratching the surface. These bases not only diffuse American culture and English, but also allow for American troops to learn about local cultures as well. Lastly, we can look at the impact of trade. When countries trade with one another around the world, we not only see new goods get introduced to a society, but also new ideas, cultures, and languages get introduced as well, all of which can reshape the social fabric of a society. For example, if we look at the Colombian Exchange, we can see how the Europeans' diet was completely reshaped thanks to food from the Americas, like the potato, which allowed for Europe's population to boom. Or if we look at the Silk Road, we can see how different cultures gained access to new inventions and products from Asia, the Middle East, Northern Africa, and Europe. In fact, whenever we see people migrate migrate or interact with other cultures in the past, we see diffusion occur. And whenever diffusion occurs, we see new ideas, cultures, and goods and services be introduced into society, which will impact the society for years to come. But now comes the time to practice what we've learned. Answer the questions on the screen, and remember, if you find value in this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And check out my ultimate review packet in the description of this video for more help with your AP Human Geography studies. 
As always, I'm Mr. Sin, and I will see you next time online.